Joey Garner Vaughn. I am Tad Larkin, the lore master of Mandalore, and today I'll be digging through the archives to conclude elaborating on the history of the galaxy. Where we last left off in this lecture series, we saw the buildup of socio-economic problems with galactic reconstruction in the wake of the Yuzhan Vong War, boiled tensions between the Galactic Alliance and Karelia, the emergence and re-emergence of several Sith including the Dark Lady of the Sith Lumaya, the One Sith under Darth Krait, and the Lost Tribe of the Sith stranded on an uncharted planet since the Great Hyperspace War, and the fall of Jason Solo to the Dark Side of the Force. We also saw the eruption and the conclusion of the brief but violent Second Galactic Civil War, the defeat of Darth Kytus at the hands of his sister, Jaina Solo, the galactic discord created by the ancient eldritch abomination that was Abeloth and her defeat by the Jedi, the defeat of the Lost Tribe of the Sith, the Jedi Order's breakaway from the Galactic Alliance, and the first Imperial election to decide the head of state of the Imperial Remnant, followed by Jaina and Jagged Fell's wedding. As stated at the end of the last transmission, most of the records we have about the Skywalkers, Solos, and their companions, and most galactic events in general for that matter, abruptly cease after 45 ABY, and then reappear in about 122 ABY. This, I believe, has a lot to do with the sacking of Ossus, and the occupation of the New Jedi Temple at the end of the Sith Imperial War in 130 ABY, and whatever records that were lost with it. However, given what we know about their ancestors, organizations, and technology, we can infer with almost certainty what happens in this interim period, which I will attempt now. Just know that while these events probably did happen in some form, we don't have hard dates, and could be highly educated speculation. Obviously, the events that I do give hard dates for actually happened. Following the election of Admiral Vitor Rage to the position of Head of State of the Imperial Remnant, something happens to where he is removed from this position. I would wager that Natasi Dalla, still salty from being ousted as Chief of State of the Galactic Alliance, and losing the subsequent election for Imperial Head of State, with the help of Boba Fett, plots to depose him, and sets herself up as Empress Dalla, to which she is in turn deposed by Jagged and Jaina Solo Fell. Whether by a vote from the Imperial citizenry or by the Moff Council, Jag and Jaina Fell become the first legitimate Emperor and Empress of the Galactic Empire since Palpatine, and in their benevolence bring great military and societal reforms to the Empire, slowly chipping away at the rampant human centrism to include non-humans and aliens in Imperial High Society as well as the military. Jaina Solo Fell creates her own Force Sect, called the Imperial Knights, who, for all intents and purposes, are Force-sensitive Imperial Guard, which, rather than using the light side of the Force to serve the good of the galaxy as the Jedi do, they use it to protect the Imperial Throne. But make no mistake, they are not loyal to the Emperor, but rather the position. And if any Emperor were to not uphold the values of the Empire or the light side of the Force, they can eliminate him or her. Han and Leia Organa Solo, I feel, would have lived happily into their old age, helping raise Alana until she herself came of age to become Queen Mother of the Hapes Consortium. The Millennium Falcon, meanwhile, would have survived as a museum piece to be enjoyed and honored by patrons from all over the galaxy. Luke Skywalker, I feel, would have become one with the Force upon his eventual death, and whether by old age like Yoda, or in some selfless sacrifice like Obi-Wan Kenobi, he would go on to guide Ben Skywalker on his Jedi path, and look on as he raises his own family and continues the Skywalker legacy. Eventually, one of Ben's offspring would produce Nat Skywalker and his younger brother Cole Skywalker, and the two would become powerful Jedi within their own rights, with Cole eventually ascending to the position of Jedi Grand Master of the Order. As for the droids, in 104 ABY, R2-D2 stumbled upon a mysterious sect of Force-using beings called the Ancient Order of the Wills, where the little astromech droid regaled the Keeper of the Journal of the Wills with the tales of Anakin and Luke Skywalker's exploits, before returning to the Skywalker family, where Cole had the droids stored within the Jedi Academy's archives on Ossus. As for C-3PO, the Protocol droid's fate was far grimmer. Being partially dismantled and dumped on a far-flung fringe world, he told Luke's exploits to two young aliens who were inspired to overthrow their repressive regime on their home planet. 
At some point, the Galactic Alliance and the Empire signed the Treaty of Anaxis, which instituted a mutual defense pact in the case of invasions like the Yuzhan Vong invasion. This, however, left out the Chiss Ascendancy, the Huts, the Mandalorians, and the Hapes Consortium. The Jedi Order, while still a separate entity from the Galactic Alliance since Luke Skywalker's parting as mentioned in the last transmission, remained in good standing with the Galactic Alliance and would no doubt be affected by this treaty. Cole Skywalker would eventually fall in love and marry an Imperial agent by the name of Morrigan Cord, and they had a son, Cade Skywalker. Though Morrigan's Imperial duties would often take her away from her family, until she decided to abandon them entirely. Back in Imperial space, Morrigan would end up creating an entirely new persona for herself, Nina Kalixte, and she would have a second family with Moff Rolf Yaga, giving birth to their daughter, the future Skull Squadron leader, Gun Yaga. Nina continued to climb the Imperial ranks, leaving Rolf for Grand Moff Morlish Vied and becoming the Director of Imperial Intelligence, with her own seat on the Moff Council. Even a century after the Yuzhan Vong War, much of the galaxy was still trying to recover from the Vong forming that negatively impacted the ecologies of thousands of worlds. But in 122 ABY, Cole Skywalker had an idea. Why not just have the Yuzhan Vong themselves use their techniques to help terraform the remaining affected worlds back to their original states, or even surpass them? And the Jedi Grand Master worked with Master Shaper Nai Rin to test his theory on Ossus, that was still barren from the disaster that befell the world during the Great Sith War over 4,000 years prior. What would become the first trial of the Ossus Project was a rousing success, turning the Jedi Academy world into a lush jungle once again, after which Cole and the Shapers went to the Galactic Alliance for financial and political backing, which they granted, and 100 worlds were selected for the first phase of the Ossus Project. Darth Krait and his one Sith that I introduced in the last transmission recognize this as the perfect flashpoint to instigate a war in which the one Sith could finally reveal themselves to the galaxy, and the chief Sith alchemist, Darth Malati, began working with the rogue Yuzhan Vong shaper, Zenak Kwa, to sabotage the Ossus project. On Wayland in 126 ABY, the Ossus method was being showcased, but when the native Manirish began sprouting hideous painful growths and the local plant life turned hostile and carnivorous, it was realized that something had gone horribly wrong, and every single one of the 100 selected worlds began to exhibit similar behavior, and millions were suffering and dying. Capitalizing on the anti yuzhan Vong sentiments that had existed in the galaxy for over a century, the Palpatinistic and Hungry Moff Council were chomping at the bit for a full-scale war with the Galactic Alliance, and, against the current Emperor Roan Fell's wishes, they invoked the Treaty of Anaxis, and when the Galactic Alliance refused to take action against the Yuzhan Vong they had backed for the Ossus Project, maintaining that it had been sabotaged by outside forces, the treaty was nullified and war was declared in 127 ABY. Support for the GA fell with many worlds overnight, as they began to secede and ally themselves with the Empire, with only the Hapes Consortium and, interestingly enough, the Bothans, who still had an Arkre declared against the Yuzhan Vong as far as I know, sitting out the war entirely. The Chiss Ascendancy, who were famous for their neutrality unless existentially threatened, joined the war on the side of the Empire. The Galactic Alliance did have one thing that the Empire didn't have though, and that was the Jedi, who, without their help, the GA may not have been able to hold their own. Emperor Fell's vehement disagreement with his moths over this war, and his friendly views towards the fellow light side using Jedi, forbid his Imperial Knights from participating in the conflict, and pretty much just left them off council to their own devices. Ultimately being wary of this war and the uncertainty about the future of the Jedi Order, the Council tasked Nat Skywalker with finding a suitable world to host a safe haven for Jedi in the event that things go south. And on the Outer Rim world of Tevas, construction of a hidden temple using century-old starships began. All over the galaxy, Imperial Pelion class Star Destroyers slugged it out with Galactic Alliance MC-80 Scythe Cruisers, accompanied by dogfighting TIE Predators and GA Crossfires, escorted by Jedi X-83 Twin Tails. 
At the disastrous Battle of Bodajef, the Galactic Alliance hired a force of Mandalorians to hold the world while the bulk of their forces were stretched thin across the front lines. However, Mandalore Charonin Ordo was murdered by Yaga Aus, presumably under the payroll of the Sith, and he pulled the remaining Mandos off Bodajef to sit out the war back in Mandalorian space. By 128 ABY, with the Jedi helping the GA beat back Imperial forces, Moff Calyx Day was approached by the One Sith, who declared their alliance with the Empire openly, much to the blatant disapproval of Emperor Fell, who could do nothing to stop his Moffs, and over the next two years, turned the tide in the Empire's favor, penetrating deep into the core worlds and threatening Coruscant itself. With Coruscant threatened in 130 ABY, the Galactic Alliance High Command formally submitted to the Imperials' terms of unconditional surrender, and at the concurrent battle at Ka'amas, Admiral Pierce Patan accepted Grand Moff Morlish Veed's terms of surrender, after falling into an Imperial trap. But one Galactic Alliance Admiral refused to accept the surrender, so Gar Stasi made his stand, took any Galactic Alliance vessel that would continue the fight with him, and jumped from the system. Stasi would wage his own war against the Imperials for as long as he'd have to. While the Galactic Alliance may have surrendered, the Jedi did not, and Emperor Fell, knowing the Jedi, knew they would never accept governance under the Sith, and intended to send an envoy to Ossus after they fled Coruscant, to attempt to coerce them to join, but under no circumstances were the Jedi to be harmed in any way. What Fell didn't count on, however, was classic Sith treachery, and hundreds of Sith under Darth Nile's command, aided by Imperial forces commanded by Moff Yaga, descended upon Ossus and slaughtered many Jedi, with Grandmaster Skywalker himself fighting off as many Sith as he could, as his son Cade escorted Jedi younglings out of harm's way. As Cole and his former apprentice, slash his son's current master, Jedi Master Wolf Sazen, battled Sith and Stormtroopers, Troopers, Cade disobeyed his mandate and rushed to his father's aid. However, Cole convinced Cade to bring the now critically injured Master Sazen back to the shuttle with the younglings, and bade him to take off. While in transit, an extremely emotional Cade Skywalker unknowingly tapped into the dark side of the Force to unleash a previously unknown ability of his, and healed his dying master. Soon after, he felt his father's death at the hands of Darth Nile in the Force, and disobeyed his master a final time. Taking a spare twin tail stored in the shuttle, he attempted to fly back to Ossus, but was shot down by a squadron of TIE Predators, only to be recovered by pirates days later. So began the Third Jedi Purge, as those who survived the massacre at Ossus either fled to the Hidden Temple, scattered themselves in Diaspora, or joined the Imperial Knights. It was once again no longer safe to be a Jedi in the galaxy, as high bounties were posted for any captured Jedi. Back on Coruscant, in the newly anointed Imperial Throne Room, Fell summoned all of his moffs for a final report on the end of the war, when Darth Krait and his cadre of Sith strode in. They slew his Imperial Knight contingent before Krait cut down Fell himself, claiming his throne and demanding that all of the moffs swear fealty to him, which they did. The Empire was now under Sith control, much to the chagrin of Moff Veed, who was promised to be Emperor if he helped orchestrate this coup, but he would continue to bide his time for now. In truth, Roan Fell had been warned of this treachery by Moff Calyx Day, and sent his decoy, his body double, to Coruscant in his stead. Meanwhile, he gathered his remaining Imperial Knights and those forces still loyal to him, and took a page out of the Rebel Alliance's playbook making calculated hit-and-run strikes at Crate's Sith Empire for the next seven standard years. The Sith Imperial War may be over, but the Second Imperial Civil War had just begun. By 137 ABY, after years of striking against Crate's forces from outposts and mobile fleets, Emperor Fell managed to retake the old Imperial capital of Bastion in the Outer Rim, with the help of General Orin Jaeger, who personally surrendered the planet to Fell and swore fealty to the true Emperor. Krait knew immediately that he had not killed the real Roan Fell, and had ever since endeavored to capture or kill him. 
but word had reached him that Fel's daughter, the Princess Maricia Fel, had been separated from her father's main forces and had been hiding out within the Imperial mission, which Crate had allowed to continue to exist despite its very un-Sith-like directive. He sent Darth Talon to the Imperial mission on Socorro to capture the princess, but she and another missionary, Astral Vow, managed to escape her grasp, running into Cade Skywalker, who had since become a Deathstick addicted bounty hunter and was hiding his Jedi identity since joining the pirate gang who rescued him seven years ago, and his crew of his freighter the Minoc, who brought the two missionaries to Vandexa, where Astral was supposed to meet up with her Jedi brother, Shadow Vow, who would in turn see them to safety. Learning of his daughter's peril, Phil specifically ordered his knights not to mount a rescue mission for the princess, as he did not yet want to reveal to his enemy that he had secured Bastion. But Master Antares Draco, who was in love with Maricia, disobeyed him, and traveled to Vandexa with trusted Imperial Knight Gennard Krieg. The Sith were also headed to Vandexa, after Moff Conrad Roos, leader of the Imperial mission, betrayed Vow's location to Emperor Krait, so Darth Nile led a contingent of Sith to reinforce Darth Talon. This epic clash of powers on Vendexa resulted in Cade being outed as a Jedi after his old friend Shadow as well as Master Sazen showed up, Maricia being nearly killed by the Sith before Cade used the same healing technique on her that he had used on Sazen, and Cade taking up a lightsaber for the first time in seven years when confronted by the Sith who had killed his father. But he was no match, and escaping the Sith, they retreated to Bastion. Not only did Crate learn that Fel had taken Bastion, but he also learned about Cade and his bizarre healing ability, which he hoped to use to heal his rapidly deteriorating body due to his Yuzhan Vong implants. So he tasked Calixte to capture Skywalker, turning once again to her Morrigan Cord persona. She would end up being torn between her son with Cole, her daughter with Yaga, and her ambitions with Veed. The Galactic Alliance Remnant, meanwhile, had been doing the same thing that Phil had been doing for the past seven standard years, conducting hit and fade raids against Krait's Sith Empire. Only Stasi had refused to even entertain the idea of working with his former enemy against the Sith. However, with Fel's forces gaining momentum and a sizable foothold, Stasi agreed to talks when Fel's ambassadors approached him. At the famous space station in the mid-rim known as the Wheel, Stasi met with Imperial Captain Bovark, and while intense discussions were being held, Morrigan Cord, who was working with another Imperial agent while searching for Skywalker on the station, discovered the meeting and decided to sabotage it, blowing up Bovark's docked Imperial shuttle and making it look like the GA did it and the ensuing scuffle got them both banned from the wheel personally by the administrator, and set relations between the two nations back to square one. After returning to the ruins of Ossus, finding R2-D2, and getting intensely guilted by Master Sazen, as well as the Force Ghost of his great-great-grandfather, Luke Skywalker, Cade sought to clear his conscience, and rescue a Bothan Jedi, Hosk Trailus, that he had turned in for a bounty a few standard weeks prior. This, however, would bring him into the heart of the former Jedi Temple on Coruscant that Krait and his one Sith now occupied. Darth Krait had foreseen this, and Cade was apprehended by Darth Talon and Darth Nile, who tortured him to coerce him to join the one Sith, and Cade refused. That was until Krait infected his friends Jariah Sin and Deliah Blue with Vong implants, turning them into Vong spawn like himself, forcing Cade to use his healing ability once again, and he agreed to join Krait if he let them go, which the Sith Lord granted. Cade began training under Talon, undergoing the Yuzhan Vong embrace of pain that I had mentioned earlier in the series, which heavily motivated the young Skywalker to escape, not before being recaptured. Cade reached his last nerve when Krait attempted to force him to kill Trailus after Cade refused to heal the one Sith ruler like he had done his friends, and taking up his father's lightsaber from a nearby trophy case, he dueled the Dark Lord and his Sith underlings until being rescued by Sin and Blue working with Morgan Cord. 
After a brief and awkward reunion with his mother who walked out on him when he was little, Cade and his friends went into hiding, laying low with his uncle Nat Skywalker, under the pseudonym Bantha Rock, at his home on Iego before a raid by Black Sun drove him away. Meanwhile, at the Sith Imperial occupied Mon Calamari shipyards, at this point known by its endonym, Dak, Admiral Stasi launched a daring raid to attempt to capture the new Imperious class Star Destroyer nearing completion, working with Mon Calamari GA sympathizers to help with the attack. However, Stasi almost found himself outmatched by Imperial Admiral Drew Valen. Had it not been for his allies turning the shipyard guns on the Imperials, the Duros Admiral would not have made off with his prize. Crate was furious at the loss of the Imperious, first of her class, and vowed to punish the Mon Calamari severely, systematically mass murdering one tenth of the population and sending millions more to work camps. This would be ongoing, and the GA would continue efforts to work towards liberating Dak entirely. The Imperious, meanwhile, unknown to Stasi, had been sabotaged by Fel's Imperials, and since Fel still very much desired an alliance with Stasi even after the wheel debacle, sent two Imperial Knights to help disarm the explosives hidden aboard. This effectively improved relations and reopened military alliance negotiations with the GA and the Empire in exile. One of the knights, Treya Sinde, stayed behind to help build up a Mon Calamari resistance on Dak. Seeing the massacre on Dak and realizing that Crate would hunt him and his family forever, Cade made it his mission to assassinate Crate. So reluctantly, Uncle Bantha set up a meeting between him and the Jedi Council in exile, presided over by Grandmaster Tira Sa at their hidden temple on the Outer Rim world of Tevas, where, though the Council disapproved of Cade's motives, Master Sazen and Shadow Vow joined his mission and hoped to save their friend from his tumultuous relationship with the dark side of the Force. Cade would gather even more allies to help him in his mission to kill Darth Krayt, including Imperial Knights Antares Draco and Ganner Krieg, his old flame turned bounty hunter Aislinn Ray, as well as a Jedi from the Old Republic, Celeste Morn, being kept alive for centuries by wearing a talisman possessed by the spirit of one of the Sith founders, Karnas Myrrh, that also turned people into rat ghouls. This deserves a transmission in its own right and is way too long to recount here, so just bear with me. This mixed troop of unlikely heroes lured Crate into a trap on the deep core world of Had Abaddon, and as the Imperial Knights and Jedi battled Crate's Sith lackeys, Cade and Celeste took on Crate. But Aislinn, attempting to run her lightsaber through Crate, found herself mortally wounded when she crossed into the Sith possessed Morn's Force Lightning. An electrified Crate was thrown off the landing platform to his presumed demise, and Cade did what no one else in history could do for Celeste mourn. He freed her from her charge of keeping the power of the talisman at bay, before destroying the talisman and the spirit of Karnas Myrrh with it. Aislinn was recovered and cybernetically augmented against her will to save her from death. Crate, meanwhile, was recovered by his most trusted servant, Darth Weirlock, the third generation of Darth Weirlocks to care for the ailing Sith Lord over the centuries. And he finished off the leader of the One Sith propping his body up in a stasis chamber on Korriban while he pretended to act on his behalf. Back in the wider galaxy, the newly minted alliance between the forces of the GA and the Empire in exile cooperated for the first time at the Battle of Raltir, striking a huge blow to the Sith with the destruction of the Coruscant Third Fleet though some kinks needed to be worked out in the relationship between the two powers, as had been exemplified during a disagreement over those who surrendered and those who refused. Stasi, now with the Imperius as his flagship since the destruction of his old flagship at the Battle of Dak, came into contact with the Jedi and began negotiations for a potential three-way alliance when their position was betrayed and they were ambushed by a Sith Imperial fleet. And to make matters worse, the Admiral was wounded by a Mon Calamari traitor acting on Sith threats to his family. The Jedi managed to heal Admiral Stasi while acting Admiral Joram Bey made a series of jumps to try to outrun the Sith, before making a stand near Tanab and coming out on top. 
Back in Sith Imperial space, Darth Weirlock began instituting his own changes while continuing to play the part of acting on Krayt's orders, appointing Grand Moff Veed as Imperial Regent, and inserting new Sith officers and technology into the smaller levels of the Imperial military, all the way down to the fighter squadron level, and, not least of all, final retribution for Dak's contributions to the Galactic Alliance. On Agamar, Fel and his Imperial Knights met in secret with their Jedi cousins to negotiate their own alliance with them, and coordinate efforts with the GA against the Sith. However, their meeting was found out, and as Sith forces battled Fel's forces in orbit, the Knights and the Jedi held their own against the Sith, but they were quickly overwhelmed and forced to flee, and get the Emperor to safety. However, Princess Sia was captured in the process, much to the discontent of her father and Antares. Meanwhile, Cade was approached by his old pirate captain, Rav, with a million credit bounty on Wayland, which Cade accepted. What he did not know about the bounty, however, when he journeyed to where this all began, was that it was for Darth Malati, who was in hiding there after having a falling out with Darth Weirlock over Krayt's true fate. After attempting to rescue his friends from Malati's clutches in her makeshift Shaper lab, Cade was in turn rescued by Master Sazen, who saved him from himself, convincing the former Jedi that he didn't have to tap into his hatred or his rage to save his friends with his power, that he could do the same with love, and they made it out safe before Malati's lab crumbled around her. On Dak, Darth Azard, who oversaw the decimation of the Mon Calamari populace earlier in the war, worked with an Imperial scientist, Vol Eisen, to create a plague that was released into Dak's oceans, killing millions of Mon Calamari and Quarren alike. Both the GA and the Empire in Exile conducted joint operations to rescue as many Mon Calamari and Quarren as they could, holding off the Sith Imperial fleet while friendly transports got to safety. Dak was now a dead world. By 138 ABY, Azard was able to ascertain the location of one of the Mon Calamari refugee sites on the hut world of Dasucha, and infected the water planet with the same toxin that had been used on Dak, while also destroying the villa of Azim the Hut, who collaborated with the GA to make this happen. Moff Yaga, who had been in command of the operation, was commended for his actions, but the old veteran of the Ossus Massacre began to feel guilt and shame for his part in the almost systematic extinction of an entire species. Species. The Huts would in turn agree to work with the GA and the Empire in exile, sending Cade to hunt down and eliminate Vol Eisen, who he tracked down and killed on Utapau, recovering his samples so that the toxin could be properly destroyed by the GA. Meanwhile, on Korriban, Antares, Ganner, and Shadow infiltrated the Sith Temple in an attempt to rescue Princess Sia, who was being held there, and while they managed to recover the heir apparent to the Imperial Throne, Antares himself was captured by his old master-turned-Sith, Eskar Nin, who tortured him until he mistakenly revealed the location of the hidden Jedi Temple. Both Darth Talon and Darth Nile came to the same discovery that Darth Malati had, that Weirlock did not successfully kill Krayt, and that the Dragon of the Sith still lived, and he eventually revealed himself to his two loyal followers, showing them a new army of genetically modified Sith troopers, which would bolster his forces upon his return. Having learned the key to his survival before the talisman was destroyed by the spirit of Karnas Myrrh, Krayt was able to resurrect himself anew and shed the Yorick growths that were threatening to turn him into a Vong spawn, journeying to Coruscant with both Talon and Nile, and slaying the treacherous Weirlock, regaining control of his empire. On the warfront, the Empire in Exile suffered defeats at Vinzoth and Barosk, while at Falleen, GA forces aided by Cade Skywalker and his crew thwarted the Sith's attempts to bombard the world into submission, after refusing to align themselves with the Sith. During a subsequent rendezvous with the mortally injured Morrigan Cord on the wheel since her escape from Coruscant after Veed found out about her double life and attacked her, Cade healed his mother of her wounds and forgave her, at the behest of the Force Ghost of his father, while also finding Antares Draco, Frozen and Carbonite, a gift from Darth Talon who harried the crew of the Minoc. After unfreezing the Imperial Knight, he confessed that under the influence of visions induced by the Sith, he revealed the location of the hidden Jedi Temple. But rather than evacuate, the Jedi Council chose to make a stand. 
The high cliffs of Tevas created a natural barrier, protecting the temple from the Sith's orbital bombardment. So a ground assault force was launched, where the Jedi and Imperial Knights held their own against waves of stormtroopers and Sith, while in orbit, Stasi's and Fel's fleets descended upon Grand Moff Veed's fleet. Things were looking grim for the Sith Imperial fleet when Krait's secret armada of his genetically modified Sith troopers entered the fray, and they nearly breached the Jedi Temple before Grand Master Chirasa ordered the evacuation, and the century-old ships making up the structure of the Hidden Temple began thrusting upward to break atmosphere. Gun Yaga, disillusioned by her squadron being taken over by a Sith and being ordered to fire on a ship full of Jedi younglings, executed her superior officer, and her father, Moff Rolf Yaga, not eager to repeat his mistakes at Asus and Asucha, rather than punish his daughter, shot his own Sith superior officer instead, and ordered all of the captains of the ships in his fleet to do the same. He then pledged himself and his contingent of the Sith Imperial fleet to fell, which would greatly bolster the Emperor's forces. With the new Sith troopers still throwing themselves at the remaining Jedi on the ground, Uncle Bantha, or perhaps Nat Skywalker once more, sacrificed himself to save Cade, while Tra Sa, in her death throes, unleashed a wave of Force energy that vaporized any Sith fortunate enough to be caught within its radius. Following the fall of the Hidden Temple, as the Galactic Alliance, Empire in Exile, and the Jedi Order licked their wounds and prepared for an all-or-nothing assault on Coruscant, Emperor Fell had another trick up his sleeve. Darth Malati had been found unconscious in a Yuzhan Vong ship and captured, and Emperor Fell negotiated with her to create a biological weapon, with which he could use on Coruscant. Cade, his crew, his Jedi friends, and his Imperial Knight friends made up the strike team that inserted on Coruscant before the main joint GA Imperial Strike Force, to knock out the planetary defenses to allow the landing of ground troops and orbital support. With the planetary defenses down, Fel and Stasi's fleets poured out of hyperspace to assault the Sith forces in orbit, and while Jiraiya and Blue took to the skies and the Minehawk with Skull and Rogue squadrons, and Morrigan Kord assassinated Grand Moff Morlish Veed, Cade and his companions moved on Crate. Meanwhile, Malati had finished her virus called Omega Red, a supposed improvement upon the Yuzhan Vong targeting virus Alpha Red, developed during the Yuzhan Vong War a century prior. Rather, she duped Emperor Fell into thinking the Sith, along with everyone else in the world, would fall victim to the virus, whereas she designed it so that the Sith specifically were the only ones immune to it. Obsessed with killing the one Sith and trying to regain his throne, Fell attempted to load the virus sample to be shot into Coruscant's atmosphere, before he was halted by Masters Draco, Sinde, and Princess Sia, who warned Fell that he was teetering dangerously close to the dark side. And after incapacitating Sinde and Sia, Antares Draco dueled the fallen Emperor to prevent him from killing trillions, including his own troops and allies being forced to kill Roan Fell in the process. Antares not only redeemed himself for his weaknesses during his captivity, but carried out the most sacred duty trusted to the Imperial Knights, preventing the rise of another Palpatine. Planetside, Skywalker, Vow, and Sazen were intercepted by Darth Talon and Darth Strife on their way to Krait, and the two Jedi promised to hold them off while Cade went for Krait. However, Sazen sacrificed himself while defeating Lord Strife, and Cade force-pushed the body of Darth Talon at Krait's feet, before dueling the Dark Lord one-on-one. -on -one. And throughout saber clashing and feats of strength in the Force, Darth Krait was vanquished by Cade Skywalker. Without their Dark Lord to control them, the Sith troopers went mad and initiated suicidal attacks against the enemy and fellow Sith alike, and Darth Nile, now de facto leader of the One Sith, ordered all surviving Sith Lords to withdraw, where they would later scatter and melt into the shadows, infiltrating high governmental and company positions to one day rise up and return. But for now, Coruscant was surrendered to the Allies by the remaining Moths. 
Wanting to ensure that Crate never returns, Cade loaded Crate's body onto a shuttle and flew it into Coruscant's primary, almost going with it himself, until the Force Ghost of Luke convinced him that he wasn't actually hearing Crate's voice inside his mind, and he was later recovered by his friends. Though Cade now thinks of himself as a Jedi, he never officially rejoins the Jedi Order, and instead continues to travel the galaxy with Jiraiya Sin and Delia Blue. As efforts to rebuild Coruscant in the wake of the battle were underway, Imperial, GA, and Jedi officials attended the state funeral of Emperor Roan Fell, and while the official political territories of the Empire and the Galactic Alliance were redrawn to their original positions before the Sith Imperial War, a new coalition government was founded, the Galactic Triumvirate, between the GA, the Empire, and the Jedi Order led by new GA Chief of State Gar Stasi, the newly crowned Empress Marasia Fell, and Jedi Grand Master Kakruk. A year after the end of the Second Imperial Civil War, the Sith contingency set into motion by Darth Nile was unable to come to full fruition, as a Sith calling himself Darth Red killed his master, captured an Imperial Knight named Yalta Vau, and impersonated him to wrestle control of the Karara system deep on the fringes of the Outer Rim. Being thwarted by Yalta Vau's protege, an Imperial Knight named Zhao Asim, along with a smuggler and junk dealer, Ania Solo, don't ask me how she's related to the Solos because the records aren't exactly clear, and her crew, Darth Red began tracking down other Sith Lords in hiding and killing them off one by one, while Ania and Zhao continued their pursuit. Learning of Darth Red, the Triumvirate was unconcerned, as he was seemingly doing their work for them, rooting out Sith survivors and killing them. But eventually, Empress Sia and Gar Stasi became convinced of the potential threat posed by Red. For the longest time, it was thought that Red sought to restore the Rule of Two, but in actuality, he wanted the complete elimination of the Sith in their entirety, as his homeworld was used as a testing ground for Vol Eisen's weapons during the war, killing all of his friends and family and knocking his planet out of the orbit of its primary. With nothing left, he had joined the Sith while secretly plotting to destroy them from within. On Mala, his aforementioned homeworld, Darth Red lured the forces of the Galactic Triumvirate as well as all of the remaining Sith to this one place, where they slugged it out in a titanic clash of darkness versus light, as Sith Lords and Imperial Knights traded lightsaber blows as well as blows with the Force on the Barren Plains. Empress Sia, not wanting to direct the battle from behind the front lines, found herself nearly killed by Darth Red, who was now the last surviving Sith of not only the battle, but in the entire galaxy. And as he attempted to entice Zhao to give him to the dark side and kill him, Ania unceremoniously shot him with her blaster. With the Sith destroyed, seemingly once and for all, Empress Sia recovered from her wounds and returned to her duties as one of the ruling members of the Galactic Triumvirate, reinstating Zhao as a full-fledged Imperial Knight, while Ania Solo and her crew continued their adventures across the galaxy. Henceforth, a new unprecedented era of peace was ushered in, with the Jedi and the Imperial Knights keeping a watchful vigilance over the galaxy. But as had been the case with the original founding of the Sith, there will always be Force users curious about the darker aspects of the Force, and there is room for temptation and evil to take root once more. But those are events that have not yet come to pass, and the future of the galaxy is uncertain. This concludes my findings on the history of the galaxy. Be sure to check out my other transmissions for more information on the historical figures, events, technology, and locations discussed in this series. And thank you all for joining me on this wild ride through over 100,000 years of galactic history. Special thanks to my Ori Ramakad tier patrons, 2100 AB, Batterai, Bofix, Brandatsky Kapoor, Opto274, Ian Waller, Jaleel, John Hollingsworth, Kyle Skarada, Kian Kier, Lieutenant Maverick 2, Matt Patton, Moonman, Nikhil Kieran, Noah Shane 45, The Commando Droid, Wirefox Terrier, Zim the Despot, Zyzer, and Zexend. If you'd like to support this channel, please visit my Patreon to find out how. Link is in the description.
In the meantime, keep your comm channels open for future transmissions, and don't forget to subscribe. Tad Larkin, out.